Kelly Johnson, um, and I'm a rising senior. I'm majoring in biology, minoring in religion. Um, and I just wanted to share my summer research uh, project with you all. My mentor was Dr. Connor. Yeah, so uh, for my summer research project, I studied mussels, um, and those are shellfish. Um, and so let me give you a little bit of background on the animals that we studied. Um, so mussels are aquatic creatures, um, meaning they, they, they live in the ocean or they can live in fresh waters. Um, and they spend all their time um, in the water, unless that is, um, they're on your dinner plate. Um, <laughs> and so they, they can be found in farms or in the wild, um, and they grow on anything that um, stays in the water too long, like ropes, rocks, piers, docks, and even ships. Um, and so these are just a few pictures of mussels that um, are farmed, and as you can see, they're growing on a rope, and these ones as well. And so this is actually a Channel Islands harbor, and this is um, where we uh, collected mussels for our project. Um, and so what we did, we, um, yeah, we basically just plucked them off right here along the docks. Wow. <laughs> and so let's talk about the metabolism of mussels. So mussels experience two conditions, high and low tides. Um, and so, as you can see, um, during high tide, the mussels are submerged in water. And so, water acts like a big, uh, comfortable blanket for the mussels. It's their uh, comfort zone, and um, they're, they're very comfortable in it. Um, there's not a lot of temperature variation, and so there's not a lot of surprises, and the mussels don't have to go through, like experience a, a lot of stress. Um, however, um, during low tide, the mussels are exposed and they're out of the water um, and so they're exposed to things like sun rain wind and uh, higher temperatures and this is uh, very stressful for them um, and so let's talk about the variation in temperatures so this picture was taken um, at zuma beach um, and as you can see the mussels are right here on the rocks um, and this is how they look like and so they're experiencing low tide in this picture, meaning that um, they're exposed to the sun. Um, and as you can see, the water temperature is usually uh, 15 degrees Celsius, which is about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and so the air temperature is usually about uh, 35 degrees Celsius, um, somewhere around like 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, you can see that's a, a large jump. That's about 20 degrees um, in indifference. So they really have uh, to go through a lot of things. So, um, so, um, so let's talk about um, the fermentation. So um, mussels use a process called fermentation or um, anaerobic respiration. Um, and we as humans do this process as well. Um, so, uh, so let's talk about how humans do it first. Um, so have you, have you guys ever been like playing basketball or like running, playing soccer and like it seems like you know you're breathing a lot and your lungs really can't take anymore but um, somehow you keep on running and your legs start to burn um, and so your legs are burning because an acid called lactic acid is building up and this is the, it, it's actually a waste byproduct um, from your anaerobic metabolism meaning um, your body has to make energy without oxygen. Um, and so humans, like we as humans can only do this for a short, a short amount of time. Whereas muscles, they can do this for up to days on end. Um, and instead of having a lactic acid, they have um, this product called succinate. And, so um, and so this is really important to our research and this is what we study. So what, is this, so what does all this information have to do with, um, with my project? So for my project, uh, we were looking at the effect of temperature on the rate of the reaction of anaerobic metabolism. So what does that all mean? So the rate of the reaction is how fast or how slow a reaction goes. Um, and anaerobic metabolism is, uh, I explained it um, in the last slide. And so uh, basically, um, I wanted to see that if higher or lower temperatures would make um, the rate of the reaction um, go up, or would 
really make it go down. Um, and so this is the preliminary experiment that I ran. Um, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to run a full experiment because of the time constraints. So um, the sample sizes are a bit small. Um, so let me explain the drawing to you guys. So these blue cylinders, um, they are, represent beakers filled with water. Um, and then these gray circles right here, uh, they represent muscles. And then these white flag-like shapes, they represent airtight plastic bags. And so I have three different conditions. So let's talk about the first one. Um, so for the first one, I put um, three muscles um, in a 15 degree water bath. Um, and this was the control group. Um, and then so for the second condition, um, I took uh, three more muscles um, and I put them in a Ziploc bag. Um, and then I put that bag inside of the, the beaker. Um, and the reason I did that, it was to mimic low tide, so the muscles don't have, um, they, they don't have like any access to oxygen. Um, and then this was a five degree Celsius water bath. And then for the third one, I did the same thing as the second one, putting the muscles in a Ziploc bag, and then um, putting that um, in the beaker at 25 degrees uh, Celsius. And so all um, nine of the muscles, uh, they were able to sit in each of their treatments for about six hours, which mimics the tidal cycle. Um, and so let's talk about the biochemistry part of uh, the project. So um, after all the muscles uh, sat in their treatments, we um, dissected their gill tissue, um, we froze the tissue, um, and then we, we weighed it. And so um, after that, we, I did a colorimetric assay. And so this is a colorimetric assay. It's just basically um, like it changes different colors depending on how much of the substance is in a solution. And so I took the muscle tissue and homogenized it um, and that, uh, diluted it with a one-to-one -one dilution. Um, and then I, um, I, I added each individual sample um, into the wells. And then so. After that, I added um, a, a, like, a specific um, list of chemicals into each of the wells, and that allowed it to change color. Um, and then it sat for about 30 minutes, um, so the, the color could get more saturated, and it could deepen. Um, and so these were the results. So um, after I like after I incubated for about uh, 30 minutes, um, we. We read it with a spectrometer at uh, 700, I mean, uh, 570 um, uh, nanometers. So these are the results. Um, and um, again, these are just preliminary results. And so there was not a significant difference. Um, yeah. And so for the future direct uh, directions, I would love to collect uh, mussels from a farm instead of a wild just to limit the variation. Um, and I would like to um, uh, optimize the assay because a few of, a few of the chemicals and things, uh, they weren't like exactly working as well. Um, and so I need some more time to understand it. Um, and I would love to have a larger sample size to get, um, to, you know, to have more variation. And then um, after that, um, I would like to, perform some gene expression experiments. And so um, I just want to acknowledge all the professors that helped me. Um, and then I wanted to acknowledge our lab team. And then just thank you um, to the McNair program. Um, and so I just want to open the floor up to any questions.
can do that since because they live in the intertidal zone. Um, you know, meaning like at six hours a day they're um, submerged in water, and the other six hours they're they're out of the water, and it just keeps changing. And so like they, yeah. So I guess they just adapted that way. Um, and it's it is very interesting because um, they they can even go longer than six hours without like with without access to oxygen. Um, great, great talk. Um, good question. So I noticed that um, when you had your different conditions, is there a reason why you didn't have a 15 degree Celsius anaerobic control? Um, yeah, so again, it's just the time constraints. Um, I, would, uh, I would like to have more treatments um, and a, a larger sample size. It's just, uh, yeah, just due to the time constraints. I wasn't able to do everything I would like to do. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'll take yeah. um, I was just curious, when you have your incubation, do you have to mimic sea water? And how do you approach the right salinity? Oh, so, um, so when we first get the mussels, they, uh, we put them in a salt water tank, and so to uh, it has to be 35 parts per thousand uh, for uh, for the right salinity for them. But for the for the assay, um, you just have to incubate it um, at room temperature. Yeah. Thank you.